Hello everyone. This is deep learning section for big data analytic course done by Professor Jeffrey Fogg. I'm the teaching assistant for the class. So let's get started. In this section we'll be discussing more on convolution neural networks. Convolution neural networks are specifically used with images. For instance, let's take a look at this example. Here you have a set of images which can either be a car, truck, van or a bicycle. So the objective is to classify. So in order to create a classification vector, which is summarized from this softmax layer, you need to extract features from an existing image. In this image, you extract a specific feature. And in this flow, you are trying to extract different features, which is responsible for saying that this is a car or this is a bus. So here in this phase, you'll be doing feature learning. And finally, you'll be doing the classification. Convolution neural networks are more involved with uh, feature extracting from images. So this has been used widely for in lots of examples and lots of problems solved by different people. So in our previous set of code examples explained, we use uh, CNN as one of the tools to do the image classification. Convolution neural networks is closely associated with the term convolution. So the idea is you have an image and you have a filter. So the filter identifies specific features. So let's say if your filter size is three by three and you are trying to identify edge information from each image, you'll be doing a convolution uh, from, uh, from one corner of the image to the final corner of the image. So here you'll be doing a convolution in this step the amount of information learned is pretty much high. So if we have a dense architecture, the overhead from doing this in uh, for a long time with high number of epochs and with the high number of data set, this can be a time consuming thing. So there are certain set of trades off uh, and certain set of techniques introduced for convolution neural networks to improve this. Here, let's take a look at an image. So image is basically a set of colors. If you take a grayscale image, it only has uh, two colors, basically black and white. But if we go for a color image, it has basically three colors. In the color spectrum, every color can be created by RGB, basically red, green, blue. So we identify these three layers, we extract the information from these three layers and you can identify a different set of features. So here what happens is like you have three channels and uh, you create a filter of this shape and it has four by four shape but it has three channels. So here uh, the dimensions doesn't overlap with this example but what happens is like when you have to learn features you have to do convolution so you have to go this way like learning this set of features from here then you have to go another three by three here three by three here likewise you have to go traverse through the all the blocks so this becomes a tensor which has like a dimension of three and it travels through all these blocks to extract features so this is a time consuming step if you want to learn all these features so there are different techniques used to uh, make this process much faster if you take a look at this example, you have the image data here, but you have a filter of three by three. So if you want to extract the features from this specific part, you can place your filter here and get the information. But when you do the convolution, if you go from here and you go this way, if you started from here, you will lose lots of input from the edge. So basically you have to do some sort of a padding to avoid this one. So here what we have done is we have created a single layer of padding and you put the filter here and you extract the information. So you can still retain the information in the edges. So this example, so you move your filter. So you have a filter like this and you move your filter here. So these are the specific values you get out here. So what happens is like when you fi this filter fits, fits onto this specific part, 
it's going to do a calculation between these values so 156 into minus 1 155 into minus 1 156 into pl uh, plus 1 likewise we are going to calculate all the values and you are going to do a summation to get a single value and that value is going to be filled here so that's the basic idea when you have three layers you will be summing up all these three values created from each channel and you create a single output so this is how a kernel works so a kernel is nothing but a filter which extracts specific information here this filter uh, extract information from the uh, red uh, color channel which is number one channel and here from green here from blue in the earlier slide we discussed that when you use all these features from the image for the convolution the overhead of training is really high because you need to learn all these features the idea of receptive field give us a different angle to work on reducing the training time so if you can limit the area of learning into a smaller smaller area so you can extract the features in an efficient way let's say you are looking at the whole image and you are doing a dense learning meaning you traverse through each and every element and you pass all these values to the next layer so the receptive field in this learning is as same as the size of the previous layer but if you can make the output from the convolution into a smaller value let's say you scan a space of 3 by 3 and you learn 9 features but you just extract one out from output from it so the nine, a 3 by 3 goes into 1 by 1 tensor so this way you can reduce the training time so this is the basic idea from a receptive field you scan a subspace and you extract a summarized feature set from the whole uh, subspace that you scan as I previously explained when it comes to a color image there are three channels one is for red other one is for green and another one is for blue so each filter that we need for the convolution needs to track each channel and this filter basically so, uh, known as a kernel has a specific size so it's static when we once we create the model so it doesn't change dynamically in the training time so we can pick this filter size uh, as 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 basically the filter size is a square shaped one so you don't pick a uh, unsquare shaped value and also most of the time this filter size is uh, the length of a filter is odd to get the square shape so if you take a look at this example when the filter comes to this place it multiplies each element by this element and sums it up and produce this value here so it travels through all these elements and produce this space so the full image size is 5 by 5 but the convoluted area is 3 by 3 because it goes here and create one value goes here create one value likewise so just extract all these features into a 3 by 3 shape At the starting point, I discussed that we have to do some padding because we are losing edge information. So this is very important. Uh, when you specifically need to retain the information from the edges of the image, you have to do a padding. So padding means you are adding an extra layer uh, in each side of the image. So basically this is done by adding zero padding or some sort of a random padding. Most of the time uh, what people use is uh, zero padding. but it depends on the application so there are some instances people use different set of paddings but it depends on the application so when it comes to using different frameworks like tensorflow to design your convolution neural network and you adding filters for the convolution neural network so there are two types of padding we need to learn the first one is valid padding the other one is same padding the same padding means like when you can uh, do a convolution in an image the if you have a specific image size if you don't think about any pooling technique the output should be as same as the image size 
so that's the same padding so it has the same dimension of the original image but when it goes to valid padding as you saw in the previous example here so you have the image size 5 by 5 but once you go through this image by doing convolution the output you get is 3 by 3 so if uh, you are losing some information or you just don't pay much attention to the edge values so this is called valid padding so this kind of padding is used in different scenarios depends on the application so when i started this section i discussed about a certain set of features extracted by different uh, set of filters so when you have to identify your car there are specific elements that you need to pay attention obviously the car is not an interest uh, the color I'm sorry the color is not an interesting feature that you need to extract uh, from the car because cars have different colors but the feature that uh, differentiate a car from a bus it's the basic shape of it so what you need to do is you need to learn specific features more into edges and it needs to detect the shape so when using neural networks specifically CNNs there are two types of features that you'll be focusing on one is the low level features the other one is high level features the low level features are the edges uh, simple colors curves and basic shapes information the high level information is specific features of a specific element it's more like a uh, paw head tails of a cat so in a car the, it can be some detail about the tire it can be some detail about the lights so those are the information this is high level information so these type of two features has to be extracted so if you are doing a classification problem of like let's say you, you need to classify cars and buses so you will be focusing more on the edges and simple colors and basically the curves of the object but if you ask to classify red color red cars and blue cars you'll be focusing on high level details uh, like uh, basic colors like it, it's more like a low level feature but when it comes to different shape of different cars let's say you want to identify a mustang and you want to identify a different car and you need to specifically take a look at the some parts of the car it can be some information from the headlights it can be some information from a logo or something so these different features has to be extracted depending on the task that you're performing in previous section i discussed about an important aspect of extracting features from a convolution and summarizing this so if you do a dense computation you are carrying uh, the information from previous layer to the next layer you will be carrying all the information from all these pixels but as i earlier explained this has an overhead in training in order to reduce this uh, training with all this information there are different pooling techniques so here we have two techniques which is called max pooling and average pooling let's say after learning you have this four by four uh, array so here you decide i'm going to do max pooling and the shape is two by two so you have a four by four image but you want to extract a two by two shape out of it so what you'll be doing is like you have a filter two by two it's going to traverse here 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 so here it calculates the maximum value from it and puts it here here the maximum value is 30 it's here and here if you take a look at the values it's one one two and here it's 37 so this is called max pooling so you don't extract all these features but you pay attention to a specific detail so it's more like you are trying to identify the features which is uh, highly uh, uh, showing better than the other features so for instance this point is much sharper than this point so in this specific area you just focus on the more sharp point so here it's 30 and here it's 112 and here it's 37 so this is max pooling in the average pooling the idea is very intuitive so we just calculate the average of this block and and divide it by the number of elements here so here you have 30 plus 0 plus 2 plus 0 32 and divided by 4 it's 8 so likewise this is average pooling so this is nothing but extracting specific set of features from the previous layer